Today I'd like to talk to you about a simple modification from the type of controller to be able to control a SSR. What is an SSR? It's a solid state relay. Used to your normal sort of relays, hear them in your car when they put your indicators on. And what they have is two contacts. So what happens is when you put on the say indicators or the relay trips, two contacts come together. And as they come together, this happens. <laughs> eventually burns through the contacts. If you had the old fashioned car that had the points on the distributor, you'd have to clean them every now and then because of pitting. So the higher the voltage amp, the bigger the arc, the more burning. So the, these are all electronic solar state relay. So they don't have any contacts. This is the 40 amp type. You can by the 20 amp type. This is for up to 380 volts at 40 amps, so that's a lot of watts. These are about five bucks each. Get the 20 amp ones, that's the one you need. I set up a spot welder, so I bought a five of these at the time, so that's why they're there. And also what's good about these is your relay may be a 12 volt relay or a 20 volt relay or a 3 volt relay or a 5 volt relay. These particular ones can be triggered from 3 volts to 32 volts DC. These can control either AC or DC but this is switched by 3 to 32 volts DC. So that's why we selected them. And this is for the most common price effective best value money temperature controller. It's known as the Rex C100. If you watched it in my videos, you know at the end there'll be a QR code that you just take a photo with your barcode reader on your camera and it'll list all the suppliers, links, videos, anything that's mentioned in the video. So that's at the end, so watch it all the way through and you'll be able to click on that and get all the info. But like they say about people being equal, some are more equal than others. These are some of the original ones I brought, they look pretty much the same. As time goes on, they make them shorter, which is great. You don't need less space. But you can buy with an SSR type or a relay type. Now this video is mainly going to be for the next step for the 3D printer, where I show you how to change over to thermocouples and SSRs. So at the moment I'm showing this for the general CNC 4A where this type of thing is normally shown by me. So you have the, the different connectors at the back and that particular one there, row 3, 4 and 5 have the relay. Normally open, normally closed, common. But I did pay more and get an SSR one previously. But then I thought why do that? A relay inside of this is triggered with voltage. So you have a mechanical relay triggered by the voltage to throw contacts to switch another voltage. So that's where people say, oh, I'll just get the one that just throws out the voltage and use that. But the thing is, you only have to take these apart and remove the relay inside and where the contacts were, put a bit of brass copper, brass or copper wire from where the holes to bridge the cross and that's what I, I did on the original one but then I said no, I wanted ones with the relay for the 3D printer to get feedback and when you watch the 3D printer video you'll see why so I, I went back up to eBay and brought the cheapest again smaller but one of the reasons why is as you can see at the back there's less terminals this has an alarm on it, so you can connect it to a siren or a light to let you know when it's on or off, heating or not heating. So they didn't have that. I'm using the contacts to trigger other SSRs and also, also the main one 
to trigger the power supply. There's a front, so on the bottom is a little clip. And you need to push that clip that pushes these fingers down. So you need to push that down flush, pull off this front cover. Now, when you get it, it will be tight. So just get a blade, don't cut your fingers, or a little flat bladed screwdriver, and just go around and slowly lift it, making sure that that is below there, and then you can pull off. You don't have to unscrew all these. You would think it would be connected to the board, but it's not. Those terminals, I've got a clip like that and the PC board just slides in like that. So when it, when it comes out, you'll just slide it out and the board will be separate. You'll see the relay as shown in these photos and I tried to look and I didn't know what voltage it was. So all what I done was I just got a battery and touched each side of the relay. I didn't know which was the positive side, which way was the negative side. The data sheet is great for the majority of the population, which is Chinese. But us English only people, it's useless. So I then just put, it, put the battery on and you can hear it click and I just wrote on the text of colour, positive and negative. Then you have to drill a hole in that board. The only reason why is to allow the cable to come out. You can get a drill, pistol drill and all that and don't waste your time. You'll slip, you'll damage something. Buy yourself a little pin vise. These have a little chuck on them and if you do any little circuit work, you put a little drill in there, push it with you. That rotates, put your finger in and drill like that. So I've got a number one center drill. And center drills are great. They have a very small point, but they won't snap on you like a drill will. That size drill will easily snap, so it's soft. So what you do is on the circuit board, get a sharp pin or something, and just mark the position of the hole. I put mine above the point where the terminals were for the relay, the positive and the negative, and halfway between any other contacts. So then you just drill by hand. Once a small hole breaks through, you then continue drilling by hand, backwards and forwards, until the chamfer has cut the big hole. You need it big enough to fit the cable in, but also you may need a little file to make the round hole elongated. So when you're trying to feed it through, you can actually bend the cable in around the hole. So that's what I did. Now these are JST RCY cables. They're used for the radio control, for batteries, that type of thing. They sometimes call them a battery cable. Come male and female. I always like to have the voltage coming in female. All you do is you get your cable that, that you've decided. They don't come with any plugs. Feed it through the hole from the inside and around. Then just solder the two ends to the terminals. I cut one cable shorter so as they both lined up with the terminals like that. Solder it in. Then what I did was I just got the opposite type and then I just used that because this covers over here. I just used that to feed it through the hole and then I could just pull it out. So that's here, covers here, slide it on, click it in. So then once it's connected, it's got about 10.5 volts on it. So that's enough to trigger the solid state relay. That hangs in your cabinet or wherever you're going to put it. They're just connected on like that. And then you've got it fully working. So you control, you can control 3 volts, 5 volts, 12 volts, 24 volts, 240 volts AC up to 380 volts AC. So it's a simple mod. You still have the relay, and like I said, watch the next video for the 3D printer, cost of 3D printer, and you see how I integrate all that to be able to control feedback into the 3D printing system. Simple, no damage, still got one relay, you still got two, so quite good, quite versatile. About 12 bucks each, they haven't seemed to go down in price, gone down in size, less terminals. And these are 400 c you can just go into the software and reprogram it up to 1200 so that's what it looks like when, when you got the 240 volt to switch the relay uh, just for your temperature controller that's for the SSR and that's the thermocouple these are the three mil thermocouples to go into the hot end and the table on the printer 
So once the other parts arrive for that project, I'll do the video on that. If you enjoyed the video, tell your friends. If you didn't, tell me. And as usual, thanks for watching. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.